Seventh grade open up resources illustrative mathematics unit five lesson four money and debts Problem number one from seventh grade unit two lesson eight Decide whether or not each equation represents a proportional relationship a volume measured in cups C versus the same volume measured in ounces Z this equation can be written as C equals 1 8th Z. Yes, this represents a proportional relationship. Since there are 8 ounces in one cup, you can multiply the number of ounces times 1 8th. For example, 1 ounce times 1 8th equals 1 8th of a cup. 2 ounces times 1 8th equals 2 eighths of a cup, and so forth. The constant of proportionality in this case is 1 8 b. Area of a square, a, versus the side length of the square, s. This equation can be written as a equals s squared. No, this equation does not represent a proportional relationship because you're not constantly multiplying the side length times the same number to get the area you're multiplying the side length times a different number to get the area. For example, a side length of one unit times one equals the area, one unit squared. A side length of two units, you'd multiply times two to get the area of four units squared. And a side length of three units, you'd multiply by three to get the area nine units squared. The area does not have a proportional relationship with the side length. C. Perimeter of an equilateral triangle, P, versus the side length of the triangle, S. The equation that represents this situation is 3S equals P. Yes, this equation represents a proportional relationship. Since there are three sides to a triangle, you'd multiply the length of the side times 3. For example, 1 times 3 is the perimeter 3. A side length of 2 units times 3 is a perimeter 6. And the side length of 3 units times 3 is the perimeter 9. The constant of proportionality is 3. D. Length L versus width W for a rectangle whose area is 60 square units. The equation that would represent this is L equals 60 over W. No, this equation does not represent a proportional relationship because we're not constantly multiplying the width times the same number to get the length. For example, a rectangle could have a width of one unit and a length of 60 units. That means that the length is 60 times greater than the width. In the second example, you could have a rectangle with a width of two units and a length of 30 units. This means that the length is 15 times greater than the width. Since we're not constantly multiplying the width times the same number to get the length, there is no constant of proportionality. And this equation does not represent a proportional relationship. Problem number two, A. Claire has $54 in her bank account. A store credits her account with a $10 refund. How much does she now have in the bank? Claire started out with $54 in her account. Then a store gave a credit to her account for $10. That means that the store gave her account $10 or put $10 into her account. $54 plus $10 is $64. Now Claire has $64 in her bank account. B. Mai owes the bank $60. She gets $85 for her birthday and deposits it into her account. How much does she now have in the bank? She owes $60. That means minus $60. And she adds $85. If we switch the order, we can have $85 minus $60 and the difference is $25. So after she adds $85 to her account, she'll have $25 in the bank. C. Tyler is overdrawn at the bank by $180. His brother has $70 more than him. How much money does Tyler's brother have? They're both going to be in the negative. 
Overdrawn means that you've spent more money than you had. Tyler's bank account is at negative 180, and his brother has $70 more than he does. We can write the expression negative 180 plus 70, which equals negative 110. Tyler's brother is overdrawn $110, which is equivalent to negative $110 in his account. D. Andre has $37 in his bank account and writes a check for $87. After the check has been cashed, what will the bank balance show? First of all, if Andre only has $37 in his bank account, he should not be writing a check for $87. He should learn how to balance his checkbook and only write checks that his bank balance can cover. We can represent Andre's situation with $37 plus a negative 87, and that equals negative 50. So if he only had $37 in his bank account and he wrote a check for $87, he would have a negative $50 balance. That means that he would owe the bank $50, not to mention the overdraft charges that they would charge him to put him further in debt. Problem number three from seventh grade unit four lesson eight. Last week it rained G inches. This week, the amount of rain decreased by 5%. Which expressions represent the amount of rain that fell this week? Select all that apply. G represents the amount of rain last week. This week, it decreased by 5%. That means that we need to subtract 5% of G from G, the amount of rain that we had last week. 5% can also be written as 0 0.05, so we can subtract 0.05 of g of g is the same as times g. 1g minus 0.05g equals 0.95g. So we can select any of the expressions a through e that represent any of the expressions that I've written on the right. b, c, and e. Problem number four. The table shows five transactions and the resulting account balance in a bank account, except some numbers are missing. Fill in the missing numbers. After the first transaction, the account balance is 200. Then the second transaction, they subtract or withdraw $147. So 200 minus 147 is 53. So the account balance after the second transaction is $53. During the third transaction, they deposit or add $90. The account balance was 53, they added 90. Now the new balance is $143. During the fourth transaction, they withdrew $229. Their balance was only $143, so I'm not sure why they withdrew $229. They're definitely gonna owe the bank money and there's going to be extra overdraft fees, but not counting the fees, the new balance is negative $86. That means that they owe the bank $86. In the fifth transaction, they brought their balance to zero. So they went from a balance of negative $86 to a balance of $0. That means that they must have deposited or added $86 to their account. Problem number five, from seventh grade unit five, lesson three, add a five and three fourths plus a negative one fourth. That's the same thing as five and three fourths and then taking away one fourth. When you take away one fourth from five and three fourths, you have five and two fourths. And five and two fourths is equivalent to five and a half. B, negative two-thirds plus one-sixth. First, let's get common denominators. Three times two equals six, so we can multiply the bottom number by two so that we can have a common denominator with the one-sixth. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. Two times two is four. So negative two-thirds is equivalent to negative four-sixths. Negative four-sixths plus one-sixth. That equals negative three-sixths, and negative three-sixths is equivalent to negative one-half. C, negative eight-fifths plus negative three-fourths. Again, we need to find a common denominator. 
I'll use 20. Negative 8 fifths is equivalent to negative 32 over 20. And negative 3 fourths is equivalent to negative 15 over 20. Now the expression reads negative 32 over 20 plus a negative 15 over 20. Negative 32 plus a negative 15 is a negative 47. So the answer is negative 47 over 20. Problem number six from seventh grade unit five, lesson one. In each diagram, X represents a different value. For each diagram, A, what is something that is definitely true about the value of X, and B, what is something that could be true about the value of X. Diagram A has the X marked to the left of zero on the number line. That means that X must be a negative. What is something that could be true? Since X falls between zero and negative one, it looks like the X is a little bit less than halfway to the negative one. So X could be negative 35 hundredths. Looking at diagram B, the X is to the right of the zero on the number line, so we know that the X is positive. And it looks like it's less than 1.5. The X could be 1.4. Looking at diagram C, I see that they have the X labeled as a negative X and it's located to the left of zero on the number line. If negative X is to the left of zero on the number line, then positive X would be to the right of zero on the number line. Negative X kind of means the opposite of X. If the opposite of X is to the left of zero on a number line, then X will be to the right of zero on the number line. So we know that X is positive. And we know that X is greater than one. It looks like it's less than 1.5, so X could be 1.4. On diagram D, X is labeled as negative X, and it's to the right of zero on the number line. Again, if negative X is to the right of zero on the number line, then X is going to be to the left of zero on the number line. So we know that X is negative. And the X looks like it's a little bit further than halfway, but not all the way to the negative one. So X could be negative seven tenths. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.